Hey, we're back in the shop with another tip, and this one's, um, well, it's a little domestic, it's a little woodworking, how about that? We've uh, used veneer tape fairly often on different projects throughout the years, um, but sometimes we don't give you all the details on how to make sure that it sticks and holds and cleans up well, so we're gonna take a minute to do that today. One of the first things to make sure is that the edge that you're actually putting the tape on is a good edge. As an example, if I flip this board over, You'll see that there's a burn mark here, and there's actually a divot there. Um, a quick pass over the joiner will flatten this out because if you don't do that, there's a very good chance that you'll have a hollow right underneath your veneer tape where that is. So you want to start with a nice flat edge, which we have done here. Mount it in a vise. You can actually do this laying flat on a bench. Just basically, you want to be able to hold it still one way or the other so that it's sturdy. First trick, we have to get domestic. Basic standard household iron. Settings, uh, medium warm, uh, not full hot because you can s scorch the veneer if you want. I can smell it, it's already working. Trick, lick your finger, hear that hiss? That means that it's hot, I can feel that it's hot, that's good. Now you wanna size the veneer tape, and we're doing it on plywood, you could actually use this on MDF as well, but that's not usually how it's done. So we have veneered plywood with a rough open edge. We've got oversized veneer, and that's great. That's the way they sell it. This is a three-quarter inch piece. This is actually, I think, seven-eighths overall. You don't need to work with the whole length of this coil. So what you wanna do is make sure you've got some extra hanging over the edge, an inch, whatever. If you're really tight on material, then pay a little more attention. But what I'm gonna do is slide a little more because I'm gonna break this other end off. If you come down here, you could try and cut it, but this is, sh this is brittle enough that you can just basically bend it down with your thumb. It's snapped there, back and forth, and you're good to go. Now that gives us the length that we need. We're gonna space it on here so that you can feel that there's something hanging over on each. Now as long as you know that you're good down here and it's not gonna move, then you can start ironing on this end. This is a little tricky. The glue on the back, let me show you this real quick too. The glue on the back heats up and it turns into a liquid essentially. So you've got a little bit of time before it starts to harden again back into the glue. But you don't want to have to move it around too much or it could reduce the effectiveness of the glue. So we want to keep it fairly tight and you want to keep the iron moving as you go. Lay it flat on there and then just start to move. Don't let it sit in one place. See how I'm feeling down here with my fingertips to make sure that it's still covering? Now I can tell that the glue has started to melt underneath it. And I'm still checking. Yep, there's nice and sticky there. We're already good. The glue is already melted. Give it a little bit more, one or two passes. And now we want to affix that. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could, you could use a J roller like this. Or, honestly, a simple block of wood works well too. You wanna do this while it's warm, before it's started to dry up. And once it's tight, you can use your nails, click along it. I don't hear any hollows, that means we've got a good attachment, but it's still warm, so we wanna let it sit for about a minute, and then you're good to go, and we'll show you how to clean this up. All right, so our glue is dry, and I can tell by lifting up on this, it's very firm, and that's exactly what I want. Now, to clean this up, obviously we have overhang all the way around the edge of this. There are different tools that are sold with razor blades built into them that'll shear these right off. You could actually just go ahead and use an X-Acto knife and do the same thing, cleaning this off. But the problem is, that's a sharp edge, and this is a veneered surface. Uh, that makes me uncomfortable. It doesn't take more than just a little bit of a slip to destroy the side of this piece. So I'm not a big fan of X-Acto knives because you can pretty much do everything you need to do with a standard square file. You need square edges, that's the important part, not a rasp, but a file, and it actually doesn't matter too much if it's a mill bastard or just a standard plastic cut, okay? You can use whatever you want. Now, let's go ahead and use our sharp edges again. We've got this piece hanging here. I'm gonna take the file, lay it on here, and roll it over, okay? Now that's broken. Now be careful because you'll have fibers in there you don't want it tearing off. Give it a little bit of a bend, and then it'll pull down. The glue's on there, we're all good. Now, to clean that end up, 
You want to take the file, place it flat against that end, and only on the push, not on the pull, take strokes. That's pretty good. We're okay there. Now we still have material hanging off to the sides. Now what you want to do is we're going to hook the file, the edge of this file, right on that extra piece there. And this is almost running right up against that veneer, but not quite. What we're going to do is on the pull again, coming down, we're going to make a ribbon just like that with that excess. Now I'm not cutting deep, I'm just slightly running and you'll see I'm at a little bit of an angle here. I've got my fingers keeping it just away because I don't want it flat flat, I want it a little bit of an angle. So I've got it like this, a little bit out and just follow that ribbon on down the piece. Okay, got loose a little bit there, you can come back, a little more pressure, no problem. Piece of cake. Now this is pretty good. You can see that the glue is still on there. You want to clean that up too. The trick here is not to go too far with the file. Again, we've got a little extra there. Maintaining that angle, we want to get most of it off. But you don't want to cut into that side veneer. Leave the glue there. You don't have to do everything with the file because that's what sandpaper is for. Once you get it close, then you come back with the sandpaper and finish up that edge. Now you're going to see that there's still probably a little bit of glue on there. The sandpaper may not have gotten all of it, but that's okay. Uh, go a little closer with the sandpaper. Don't go too far. You don't want to burn into the veneer, but a little bit of denatured alcohol, clean that off too, and then dry up and you're good to go. So with a simple file and an iron, veneer work in your shop, piece of cake.